How are we? What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about two cards going on this weekend. There's a new new, new promoter in town, Pro, Probellum, by Richard Schaefer. Well, he's going to be co-promoting with like different promoters depending on what country. Last last week, it was the Sunny Edwards against Mama in Dubai. This weekend, it's going to be um, Lewis Ritson headlining the show near Newcastle at the... Um, I think it's the Meadow Rayton something arena. Um, Louis Ritson, you know he sells good tickets over there. He he's he's back again. And um there's a couple other fighters that you might recognise that I'm just gonna point out. And then the the, the second f- card we're gonna discuss is uh, the zone Manchester Arena, Joseph Parker against Derek Chisora 2 or Derek Chisora against Joseph Parker 2 depending which is your favourite so well, without further ado let's talk about the first card Probello like I said Lewis Ritson is going to be the one headlining it he's um, fighting a guy called um, Christian from Mexico with a 25, 25% KO ratio so that should should be a safe bet. I mean, because the last time um, Lewis Ritson fought, he got stopped by Ponce from Argentina. I don't know if you remember when his um, his dad threw in the towel, but Steve Gray refused to um, to re- re- refused to obey the rules. I mean, not obey the rules. He was he was it's, it's up to the referee. It's, it's his side's discretion whether to throw back the towel call off the fight but he decided to uh, give um, Lewis Ritson the benefit of the doubt and allow the fight to carry on and um, he still ended up getting stopped so that was a pointless exercise by the referee but anyway we move on he's going to be fine Christian from Mexico and um, we see how that fight goes the other guy Ricky Burns going to be fighting too he's um, I'm surprised he's still fine I thought he was retired you know but um, you know he he's he's just I think he obviously still still got the um the drive to carry on. Kudos to him. He's fighting a guy called Ileana, twenty twenty six fights, nine losses. That nine losses, I think um they're quite recent. So you know it's just another you know quick get out before Christmas. But you never know with. These Mexicans have been coming down to these shores and causing an upset. And then we have um, Thomas Patrick Ward, who's fighting a guy called Leonardo Pradilla. Hold on, let me just have a quick drink of this. Um, he's from um, Venezuela. How many fights has he had? He's had um, 20 fights and three, three losses. In that's and that's quite recent as well. In his last six fights, he's won three, he's lost three. So it's just another, you know, as a home fighter, is just to you know just to get out, debut this um, new um, card, Problem, and then we see how they go. Whoever thing. So why are we not? While we we're in the northeast, there's going to be a few other fighters, a few upper comers. A guy like Mark Dickinson, I really like him. He won. I saw him win the um, the English national ABA. He's very good talent. GB GB boxer didn't quite make it to the Olympics. Still doesn't mean he's not as good as whoever made it. But um, it's gonna be. He's trained now with Ben Davison, who's the hot trainer at the minute. So but there's large hopes, and there's a few other guys in the card. I don't even know who they're fighting. Let me you just put it up so you could see what I'm talking about. You see, all you see is a lot of um. TBAs, TBAs, TBAs. I'm sure in a couple of days they might update us or whoever is fighting. Um, who else? Got this Jude Laws is quite is quite loud. It is quite popular. I don't really rate rate him really, but hey, a lot of people seem to like him. He tries to load up and he f- thinks he's a Mexican fighter and he going to go himself, he going to himself into some trouble when he was, he tried to fight. And got ended up getting stopped. But yeah, that's it. And let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move down to Manchester. 
Manchester Arena, Derek Chisora against Joseph Parker. Part two. What do you think? What do you think of that fight? You guys looking forward to it? Tell me. Tell me something. Well, you can tell me something. I need to start doing live streams so you could start writing, sending me messages and tell me what you think about my content and what I'm saying in of the fights. So, Derek Chisora. There's a few people on the undercard. Zelfa Barrett is going to be fine. Uh, um, it looks to me like a a final eliminator for the Agawa IBF. He's fighting a guy from Australia, Bruno Tarumi. I mean, it's an interesting fight. Bruno Tarumi is 26 2 and 2. Zelfa Barros is 26 and 1. I remember seeing him losing to um, Ronnie Clark. He got dropped in that fight, but he ended up losing in a majority decision. Is a shot that he didn't see. Um, I, apart from losing that fight, I thought he lost the fight against Ma Kiko Martinez, but he got the benefit of the benefit of the doubt as a home fighter. But he's fighting against this Bruno and, and Bruno Tarimo for Australia, and he's he's lost as well. But he's got an L in his record, and in that fight he lost. He fought against another fellow Aussie, and he lost every round. So. He, that just tells me that it could be easily outboxed. How could you lose all 12 rounds you, against a fighter who's not really that known? So I expect Zelfo Barras to, to have a nice Christmas, so to speak. A week before Christmas, should have a nice Christmas. Moving along, there is uh, two super middleweights from Britain in tough fights. The first one, <clears throat> Jack Cullen. He had a fight, but that fight got... Um, pulled or one of injured due to injury or something, but he sold 800 tickets and um, he's definitely still wanting to stay in the fight. So he's going to be fighting a guy called Kevin Lolo Sanjo from France. Um, he's undefeated 16 and 0 with 14 KOs. But albeit his last two fights is, um, is gone by decision. So, um, Maybe he's not as um as tough as hard punching as his um as his um record suggests. I've studied a little bit, I just watched a couple of clips of him. It looks like a guy that he's just he could fight in a weight below um this Kevin guy. He's quite bulky, he's pulling a lot of mass to make this super middle. He throws a lot of hooks. He tries to smother his work. He uses his strength. I mean, this looks to me like a good fight. I mean, Jack Collin is coming off age now. His last two performances is coming into form. He he beat John Doherty, who was a, who was a, a good prospect. And then after that, he beat um, Udrim, who was fought at world level. So, um, you know... See how that fight goes. It's going to be. It should, it should. I think this fight should gel well because Kevin comes to fight, and so does Jack Collins. He doesn't really fight from the outside. He's, even though he's quite tall and long, he, he likes mixing mixing it up in the inside. And then you have two southpaws <clears throat> fighting a super middleweight. Carlos Gongora is going to be um, defending his IBO title. Against fellow southpaw Leron Richards. I mean, Callum Skogora, where is he from? From Colombia. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, <laughs> this is a solid, solid fight, a solid, solid test. He's got a good amateur pedigree and he's undefeated. So is Leron. So, the, you know, I look forward to seeing how this fight pans out. Two southpaws, so there's no one who's got really an advantage in this it all depends who fights the southpaw better Carlos is quite dangerous he he hits hard um, he, he, I remember he he stopped uh, a Kazakhstan Ali Ahmed Akhmedov in America 
that was an upset because Ali Mek um, Amekadov was um was a was a was a good prospect and you know under the um, GGG banner and he wasn't expected to get stopped. He got stopped at the twelfth round. Liron Riches, Liron Riches from now, he's not really had hard fights. Actually, he fought Lennox, Lennox Clark when he was defending his Commonwealth title and his British, and um, that was a tough fight. That was a split decision in Birmingham, and that was a very tough fight. So that's the only tough fight Liron Riches has had. It's a good slick southpaw. I don't think he punches as hard as um, Carlos, but you never know. Depends on the night. He's now been training with Dave Caldwell, so that should be interesting. Dave Caldwell is trying to get him to sit on his punches more, find better angles, and then throw hard shots. So that's another interesting fight. Joseph Parker against Chisora. David Hayes no more with Chisora. His last time with the management 258. Anthony Joshua's management company. I like the way Derek always finds a way to reinvent himself. There's no one like him. Look at that. He's had 11 losses, 32, and he's still on high, and still on pay per view cards or pay per view level cards. I mean, he's going to be selling. They've sold more tickets than last week, Conor Ben and Katie, Katie Taylor. You know, that shows how much um, popular Derek Chisora is and Joseph Parker. They, they dance well together. It's probably the main reason why we're having this fight because really and truly not many people was asking for this, like the hardcore boxing fans. But if the casuals still want to support it, you put it on. You have to follow the money. What do you think about this fight? I don't know what to think about this fight. This I have to keep going back and forth. Um, Joseph Parker is it's like he hasn't got that dog in him anymore. But um, now he's training with Andy Lee. I know he trained with Andy Lee in the last fight, but they they went together for too long. Now he's had more time to 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 be with um, Andy Lee, and now I I would like to think that it will improve Joseph Parker, and he will come he will come to this fight better than last. And same same as Derek Chisora, he's gone back to Dave Caldwell, who's a good trainer. So, you know, and Dave, Dave Caldwell is not the sort of guy to just, it's not in there just for a paycheck. He would he would work on things to make Derek Chisora better. But with Derek with his age now, how old is he, what, 36? You know, it all depends what, what, what round he gets tired because he gets tired quite early. He's quite explosive in the in the beginning stages, but by round five or six, four, you start seeing gassing. He could still plod along and finish the twelve rounds, but he's compromised. Is there going to be a stoppage in this fight? Maybe. It's heavyweight boxing. You're one punch away from a disaster. But um, there's one there's one um stacks I don't like about Derek. Is um whenever he lost and he has a rematch, he doesn't finish the fight. He had a rematch against Tyson Fury. Don Charles had to pull the plug. And when he had a rematch with um Dylan White, he got stopped by a left hook. The ref the ref didn't help him in that fight, just kept on taking points, which made Derek desperate. But doesn't matter, he got knocked out. You know, and Joseph Parker, he's just been unlucky when he fights in the UK. I mean, when he got when he when he when he first lost against um, in his first loss against Anthony Joshua, um, the ref didn't allow him to fight on the inside. And how is a guy who's smaller, who's a shorter guy, how are you meant to fight someone who's bigger than you? Where what? Where would you? Where are you most? Um, successful it's got to be on the inside if the ref is not going to allow you to fight on the inside how are you going to win the fight you know and then when he fought against um dylan white he was doing okay till he got dropped um till he got knocked down only to find out that the knockdown was was a headbutt and he was 
he was concussed. He could have been concussed for the rest of that fight, and he still managed to um, to um, finish the fight. So you know, I don't know what would have happened if he didn't get headbutted down. But hey, we see on Saturday how the fight goes. There's a few other guys on the on the on the undercard. There's a guy a cruiserweight, Jordan Thompson. Quite exciting. He looks six foot seven cruiserweight. It's hard. A lot of these cruiserweights seems to be hitting that they've all got good right hand. I'd like to see all these guys see each other in the future. But he's um he's um eleven and 0. you know. We see how it goes. Alan Babich is gonna be he's gonna be around fighting uh, a guy called David Spielman. He's uh, this looks to me like a two, three, four round job max. Um, I don't know what's going on with the matchmaking here. I think I think maybe Alan Babich is finding it difficult to find a suitable opponent, but it's good to have him out. Sandy Ryan, GB member. It's going to be a third fight. Another GB member, Cyrus Patterson. And then the guy from um, New Zealand, I think he's going to be alongside Joseph Parker. Cruiserweight, David Nienka. He's a, he's a good talent, Olympian, you know, I like him. And um, he's going to be in his second fight against the journeyman, as you should expect. And um, that's the card. And there's another girl called Rihanna, Rian Dixon. She's going to be fighting. Or is she a lightweight? But there we have it. Two cards. Which one are you looking forward to? Which one are you going to be watching? The problem one is going to be in, um, I think it's free on Box Nation and Free Sports. And um, Manchester is going to be on his own. But that's enough of my time. Thanks for listening. And the next next video is going to talk about the, um, the, the other Saturday cards outside this country. In America, Gonzalez against Zoto Ramirez. In um, Kazakhstan, Yulifsinov, the 2016 Rio Olympian. And then, when did, what's the last one? There's, a, there's one more on Saturday. Hmm. Oh yeah, PBC, the PBC. It's going to be a Morel against Fox. Uh, that'll be a interesting one. Morel against Fox. Right. Thanks for your time. Uncle T signing out.